Hey, welcome back to Chase's Everything Shooting. Today we're going to talk about reloading logs and keeping your reloading area organized. And, you know, a lot of people are going, to go, well, who cares about that? Well, I think it's super important. And when I got into the reloading, a buddy of mine who's been doing it probably for 40 years said, hey, you know, you got to keep good logs, you got to do this, and kind of stepped me through the processes that he felt I should take. Well, I totally agree with him. The importance of having a, sh a log that you've logged every one of your rounds into is super important because you never know when there's going to be a problem with primers, a problem with powder, there could be a lot of different things. The load could be light, it could be a little heavy. Um, your gun may not like it because it's too light. There's a lot of things. And so in your reloading, by keeping a good dedicated log, you'll kind of figure out what the best round is, what works best in your gun, what gives you the most accuracy, what gives you the cleanest shot. There's a lot of things that, that that log will help you with. And you know what? I don't know how many of you guys and gals out there have computers out in your reloading area. Now, I, I don't in this area. You know, I've got my, my SL900 for my shot uh, shells, my 650, Dylan 650 for my 45, and this is the 9mm for my wife, the square D, um, B, I'm sorry. But I do have a computer about 10 feet down the row. And I use that computer because, you know what, I did everything by paper. And you know what, you spill something on, on it, it gets, you know, blown around or it gets moved or it gets torn or something happens. You know, it's just the paper's pretty much out of date now. And I really would suggest going to a spreadsheet. There are a couple of programs out there that I've seen. And, you know, I don't, not that I would pay the money for them when I can put it in Excel and do it real quick and do it for free. You know, but that's, you know, if you want to spend the money and do that, that's pretty cool. And so let me tell you why I think going digital is most important, is, is that you can pull it up anywhere. If I've got mine loaded on the cloud, and if a buddy of mine says, hey, what are you shooting on your, your uh, 7.6 2 by 39s I can pull it up and say, well, I'm using this primer, I'm using this bullet, I'm using this many grains of this type of of uh, powder and the more I use it the better I hone my skills and get better and better rounds now eventually you know I'll be playing with it a little bit more I've got buddies that load light for certain things load heavy for other things you know I I'm not a super big hunter I do hunt I have a deer lease but you know I don't I don't hunt professionally. I don't go for big game. And so what I do, yeah, 308 is, is perfect for what I do. It's close enough, it's tough enough, it does what I want it to do. So I can play with those rounds. Yeah, I shoot my 5.56 five, when I do a little bit of hog hunting uh, or some coyote hunting. You know, I'll, I'll use the 5.56, five, or I actually have a, um, a 44 Magnum uh, Deerfield by, um, oh crap, can't remember who it is, Ruger. And that's a great, great hog gun. Uh, and it's really a good uh, coyote gun, too, for close range. It's real accurate and packs a punch. But... You know, reloading those, my primary loads are my 45, my nine, and of course my shot shells behind me. I have single stage reloaders for doing all my smaller calibers, 
my my 44 mags, my 357s, my 38 specials. Don't shoot a lot of those, so a single stage works for me. Um, for my uh, 308, I do that single stage. My 556, I do that single stage. Probably going to look at a progressive for my 308. I'm shooting that enough that that might be a, a, a good thing to do. Not sure how I'm gonna do that or if I'm gonna do that yet, but for right now, it's all that's all done a single stage uh, reloader. So again, let's get back to the importance of keeping those logs. Those logs are super important. And the more you reload, the more you'll understand that, oh, you know, I did this at uh, 5.6 grains. Let's try 5.8 and see if that makes a difference. Um, it makes a difference when you know exactly what you've done and you can go back and you can recreate it and make it work again. And you're gonna do some that aren't gonna work. And trust me, if you think that you're going to do some reloads that aren't gonna be crap, you've got another thing coming. Everyone has it. We've all made mistakes. Under, under load, overload, um, not a good seat. The primers aren't as powerful as, as we would like. You know, there's a lot of things that go into making up a bullet and the characteristics of that bullet. So it's super important for me, and I think it will be for you, is to keep very good, accurate logs. Now, on my 12 gauge shot shells, I have a sticker that I actually stick on each box that's got all the pertinent information on it. Along with keeping that in my regular log, I put that on the box. Likewise, I have a sticker for any of the boxes that I, any of the 50 round boxes that I put bullets back into. Now, what I do with my bulk is I try to rotate new with old and so whatever I have in my my can I'll dump it out I'll put the new loads in after I've tested them to make sure they're okay I'll dump those on the bottom and then put the older loads on top so I'm using the old to new I actually stick a little piece of paper in there also that says what rounds I put in there and the different load factors. So I kind of have an idea if I've made a couple of little changes or something, I can figure that out. Nine times out of 10, I'm within two grains uh, either way and my powder is fine. I try to use the exact same primer every time. So I don't have some of the problems that other people have that they can't, hey, they can't get the primer or they can't get the normal primer they like. You know, they can't get the powder they normally like, so they have to change. Those, I wouldn't commingle. You know, if you make a radical change primer-wise or load-wise or uh, powder-wise, I wouldn't dump those in. I'd keep those totally separate until you've run them and shot them and you know that that those are going to perform the way you want them to. And one of the other things that I've come across by uh, my reloading is, you know, there's always little parts on your reloader that are going to wear out or break or um, you don't use all the time. You know, there's just certain things like that. And for a while I was just, I dumped all my Dylan stuff into one tote and then I'd go through looking for what I needed. Well, I got a little smarter on that and what I've done is I went to Pro Bass Shop or to any of the big sporting goods stores and I got these fishing tackle boxes and what I did is is I drop everything in. Every one of these is labeled. Now, this is my Dillon uh, SL900, this is for my shot shells back here, but I'll kind of pop this open where I don't drop anything out, but you can see all the different parts 
that I have in here. Some parts wear out faster and I stockpile some of those. So I keep everything in one container, one easy thing for each one of my loaders. So my square deal's got its own container like this. My uh, 650 has its own. Any of my uh, hand loading, it's got the 357's got their, their, its own little container. And I do that for a reason because I don't wanna be looking through all these different parts in this tote to try to find the parts that I need. This makes it super easy. And when I'm reloading, if something happens, I can just pull it out, pop it open, get the part I need, fix it, and then keep, keep going with what I'm doing. And it just makes your life a little bit easier. The more organized you are in reloading, the better off you'll be. Now there's a lot of people that say, you know, you, you need to be more uh, meticulous on how you do it. I'm pretty meticulous, but I'm not super meticulous. I, I'm going to say I'm kind of average. My couple of my buddies, you know, they're super anal. I mean, they are, they keep way more information than I do. They are just more stressed about it. They don't even have a radio or a TV out in their reloading area. Now, I've got a radio and a TV. I listen to the radio and that seems to make my, my time go a little bit better and easier. But they tell me, oh no, you're gonna get sidetracked. You're gonna make a mistake. Well, that's possible, but kind of unlikely. So it's super important to keep the information, super important to stay organized. And what I'm gonna say is, is go out there and figure out the way you wanna do it. Because I do it one way, that's not the only way to do it. There's 10 other guys doing it 10 other ways. There could be 100 guys doing it 100 different ways. You just need to find what works for you. But the most important thing is, is the logs will help keep you safe. If you have some bad rounds, you'll know where to look for them. If you've got some problems, you'll know where to look. So think about that, keep your logs, keep going, and keep reloading. If you'd like a copy of my digital format for my ammo and uh, for my rounds, I'll gladly send that to you, not a big deal to me. I'm a sharing kind of guy. So if you want that, message me and I'll, I'll email that to you. And I appreciate you coming by and stopping. And you know what the most important thing is, is to be able to hit that subscribe. And if you don't want to subscribe, hit the like. It doesn't cost you anything. I'm not out to make a million bucks off of this. I do this really for fun and information. And so if you can just help me by subscribing, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified every time I post, and then definitely like it, that'll help me a lot. So thank you. Thanks for coming to Chase's Everything Shooting. And we'll see you on the next one. We're going to be doing insurance coverage for your firearms. And boy, did I get a big awakening about that just recently. Thanks. Don't forget to subscribe.